What's up guys, Shuri here, and today we're going to go over the Battle Fair. You got a lot of great stuff here. That, that's actually not true. There's really not that much good stuff here. But I think Might and Glory has a pretty good chance of being something good. Serpent's also good. And then you have things like Corsair. If you have armor issues, that's also a good one to go for. But let's go ahead and get into what I think you should go for and in what order. First up is Might. And when I say Might, I really mean Might and Glory. And also, all four of the perks I'm going to explain. But remember, the four perks for both weapons are the same. So I'm just going to go over them once. And just know that it does apply to both weapons. So the first perk is Might Shotgun's damage temporarily increases after a reload. With Glory Pistol equipped, this effect lasts longer. Next up, Inspiration. Damage dealt with Might Shotgun increases the damage of the Glory Pistol. This effect has two levels. If someone can clarify, does that mean if I shoot them twice with Might, it does more? Or does that mean that it levels up as the gun is upgraded? If somebody can clarify that for me, I'd really appreciate it. Next up is Warning Shot. A hit with the Glory Pistol reduces the Might Shotgun's reload time. This is important because when you do run out of ammo, you shoot them with the pistol, and when their pistol either runs out or you knife, you then reload your shotgun much faster. So this perk is actually pretty important, and it'll help you be able to take on more people at a time. Next up, Instant Reload. Eliminating an enemy with the Glory Pistol instantly reloads the Might Shotgun. This is important because whenever you kill someone with your shotgun and then you run out of those two bullets, either using King Slayer or killing them with the pistol is the fastest way to reload it without actually having to reload. And that is super important when you have a lot of people on you. And then the Glory Pistol is basically just all those four perks are the same for both. So here's where I love this shotgun. You go ahead and hit kill the first person, then you hit them with that pistol and do a ton of damage, and then your shotgun just does a ton of damage right after that. And if you're using something like Daredevil, it can hit as high as 5,000. And that is what makes Might the best backup shotgun to any sniper. And then also, when you hit them and you have the sniper perk for um, pistol damage, you can hit them for as high as 2,000 headshots with just hitting them with the Might. It's really nice. Then you have the Serpent Knife, one of the best knives in the game, and it has the buff called Snake Bite. Upon a hit, leaves an effect that deals damage over time and slows the enemy down. This effect can be lifted by any healing consumable, which is kind of a downside, but it's all good. Right here, it's going to show you how much damage it does and show you that it also will do 100 damage every time that it does its tick damage. 1800 is what it does, and then if so, they have Corsair chest, it will only do about 1200. And that is why it started out at like 1250 and then slowly increased 1800 once their armor went away. But next up is Firefly. It has the perk called Warming Up. Dealing a certain amount of damage increases the damage of your next shot. This effect fades if you don't deal damage for 5 seconds. This has a green, yellow, and red thing on the back of the Firefly, and will do different damage according to that. Here is some gameplay I did with the Firefly, and you can see kind of where it stands. And it does pretty decent damage, and it shoots very fast. It's pretty accurate. If you play aim off, it is much less accurate. But remember, anything that's a backup to a Barracuda can look pretty good. Um, but this one does a pretty good job as a backup weapon to the Barracuda, but any gun can really work. Just know that it's not as good as like a Chopper or a Survivor. It does have some of its problems. Just don't think that it's going to be the best AR in the world, but if you are in looking for an AR, it's definitely an option. Uh, one option I'd be very wary of is the Suppressor. While it's newer and it can kill people very fast, it does have some problems. If you and your opponent are both strafing, it can actually miss a lot of shots, and they just don't register it, and I don't know why this is. But it also has a perk that's really good, which eats 6 hit on an enemy, creates a frost blast, and it does a ton of damage, and it can even hurt people that are near them. I'll show you how this works, and it'll also slow the enemy down. But remember, this gun can kill people very fast, and... It is pretty good, especially if you and the other person aren't really moving, but it does have its problems, as I said. 
So I'll show you how it's good in some ways, but then I'll also show you the problems. And I'll also show you the frost blast, of course. Uh, every time you see that little thing, obviously that's the frost blast. Uh, I don't know how else to explain that. But here is how it can hurt people even through walls. Right here, the sixth shot is going to hit them for 800, and then it hits the guy on the other side of the wall for 800 as well, and slows them both. So that is one good thing about this, and you can get multi-kills from that, which is great. But right here, as you can see, we're able to kill people pretty fast, but there are some registration issues right here, and I don't know, it'll be really clear right here. Right here, I am shooting him, and it's just deciding that oh, not all the shots want to work. And it is a real big issue with this gun. It can just be really inaccurate sometimes. So just be wary of that. Next up is Bulwark. This is a helmet that activates a shield and decreases 50% of your incoming damage. This will last for 10 seconds, but remember it also decreases your damage by 50% too. I'll show you what I like to do with this. And when I say that, I mean what you could possibly do. It's not a very good idea. And it is why it's still in the battle fair. But one thing that it does have is health steadily regenerates if no damage is received. And I calculated that out to be about 90 health per second. So that is kind of neat. And here's really the only thing I found that you could really use this with that might really work for you and kind of be a benefit. But again, I want to stress that this is not the best loadout to use. And I don't really think that you probably should go for this unless you already have everything else. Everything in the battle fair at this point pretty much is just like not the best stuff. But one thing you can do is for a fifth loadout or fourth, um, run around with Brawler with Wasp. And then I have to use Reanimator Pants so I can heal. And in, instead of having to use health pills, I'm just letting my health regenerate because of what the helmet does. And you can use the helmet to stay alive and get away and then have your health start to regenerate. That's what I did here. And some of the benefits to that is the fact that I'm still alive, so when this person went over to C to get C, I was able to kill them and then stay here and kind of just help defend the area. So next up is Corsair. If you need a chest, this is a good one to get, and it only has 17 levels, which makes it super ideal for people who only have like Kevlar and Shell Chest to be able to get this, because it is the fastest one with the least fragments to get. And it has Slash Protection. This reduces incoming slash damage while you have armor. The most uh, important thing that this protects you from are throwing knives. Instead of getting hit by an instant 4k, you will only get hit by 2800, which is nice. Or if you go from the video from earlier when I was using Serpent, you can see that this person gets hit for 1200 and then gets hit by 1800. And so it does protect them long enough to be able to kill me. But I do want to be clear, in most cases, you're going to get shotgun first, so you won't have armor, so this doesn't help you in those cases. This only helps you in these specific kind of cases. Last and definitely the least is Rhinoceros. You get to have one more offensive consumable per life, and it increases your movement speed by 20%. Um, I think this is a stupid pants because you're never going to be alive and use three grenades. I mean, you will sometimes, but you're much better off using other things. It almost never comes up that you're going to need that third grenade. And if you, by some miracle, are alive after two grenades, like, you would much rather have something like Cheetah Pants or Daredevil or Jockey or pretty much anything other than this, um, just because it, it would help you a lot more often. So uh, I think these pants are stupid, and, I mean, if you want to just collect everything, go for it. But please don't choose this over something else you need. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I'll do my best to get some content out. Uh, my iPad is broke and uh, our car's also broke. So it's going to take a while to get it fixed. Uh, I think Thursday we might be able to get it sent to Apple and see what happens. So uh, I guess I'll just be playing on my phone and putting out stuff from there. But I don't have any of the recordings from anything. It was on my iPad, so I pretty much have to start over on all my videos that I was making. So things will be delayed on things like the Liquidator tutorial and other videos. So sorry about that. Uh, I'll do my best. All right, guys. I hope you have a great day.